All right, Job chapter 27, let's call this one chipping away no more subtleties because in this chapter, Job is going to say, as God lives, even though he might have essentially brought me to a place that has very little joy, I am still not going to speak deceit. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to admit to the things that you are saying simply because you're pressuring me. And finally, as we mentioned before, he is not going to put away his integrity before he goes on to say, let my enemies be as the wicked who have no hope, who will not necessarily cry out to God in their time of need, nor consistently call to him whether things are going well or they are not. Moreover, he's going to say, but regarding God, you have seen his ways. Why then do you still speak in vain about the ways in which God treats a wicked man, which is going to be the key distinction between the way in which Job addresses how God treats the wicked and the way his friends have overgeneralized about the way God treats all the wicked. As Job is going to go on to say, yes, his children may suffer harsh consequences. Yes, his riches may be fleeting. Yes, his dwelling likewise might be a temporary shelter before God brings the east wind to sweep it all away. But understand this, that to fully understand God, you're going to have to understand how he works in general and in the specific. And as we sometimes use the illustration here, one that I have borrowed, a counterfeit is at times distinguished from the real thing by its subtleties. And that is what we are seeing here as the difference between Job and his friends. Job is able to see, once again, the nuance in the ways that God works, both in general and in specific isolated circumstances, something that his friends do not pick up on. It's the kind of thing that, once again, as we've already mentioned, goes back to a verse that we may eventually be able to call another one of our dead horse verses or passages if we continue to keep quoting it this much. But the end of Hebrews 5, around about verse 12, it will say, for though by this time you are to be teachers, you need someone else to teach you, again, the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to discern good from evil. And what we are seeing here in a time when once again, Job is under a much higher level of stress and grief than his friends are is evidence of a man who committed his more prosperous years to having his powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. And not only that, to be able to distinguish the more subtle ways in which God works from the more general things that just about anyone can see. And so in recognizing the way that God treats a wicked man is distinct from the way that he treats the wicked in general, Job is able to take his friend's false statements about the wicked and subtly turn them into truth. And even in the midst of all his difficulty and uncertainty, Job seems to be a man whose senses are trained to genuinely understand the subtleties of the ways in which God works, while his friends seem to be getting exposed as men whose knowledge of God may be counterfeit. 